Good morning, good morning, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We shall start the program for this morning. Um, just to make sure that you are in the right place, we are in a Diamond Auditorium, and we are going to be talking about green gold towards a flourishing cannabis and hemp industry in South Africa. Okay, um, first, my name is Kenny Tenza, and I am the Executive Manager for Business Development and Commercialization for one of the three divisions of the CSIR, one being Advanced Chemistry and Life Sciences, and I'm going to be the chair of the session this morning. We've got quite a packed program, so I'm going to move very, very quickly, and I'm going to request my speakers to be straight to the point, and I think there is a lot of value to be derived from the discussions, so I will allow us a robust discussion hereafter. But for now, let's start with the formal proceedings, and I'm going to introduce um, one of our speakers, and he's going to talk about the role of small, medium, and micro enterprises, that is SMMEs, in growing cannabis and hemp industry in South Africa. The speaker's name is Dr. Blessed Okole, and Dr. Okole is a CSIR research group leader in agro processing and acting impact area manager in agro manufacturing. He holds PhD in agriculture from the Technical University of Berlin in Germany and has a strong international background in agriculture and business operations. He is uh, currently a member of the Interministerial Committee on um, National Cannabis Master Plan and former advisor to the uh, Minister of uh, Health. In his last position, before joining the CSIR, he was the managing director of SG Sustainable Oils Limited in Cameroon, where he was instrumental in establishing a 19,820 hectare um, palm oil plantation with ultra-modern oil mill. Dr. Okole previously served as the head of infrastructure and planning for the Technology Innovation Agency, that is TIA, and the Chief Executive Officer of East Coast Biotechnology Innovation Center, both initiatives uh, being under the Department of Science and Technology. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Okole is an entrepreneur and he started a successful tissue culture company called the African Biotechnologies in South Africa, and he has published a number of publications in internationally peer-reviewed uh, papers. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome on stage Dr. Okole. Thank you, Kenny for the beautiful introduction. Good morning, colleagues. Uh, we don't have a lot of time, so I'll try as much as possible uh, to go to the business of the day. So I'm going to talk about uh, the difference between hemp and cannabis, and then also give you the economic importance of uh, cannabis and the South African cannabis industry. Uh, the CSI partners in a program that we're doing, a novel program that we're doing in the cannabis in industry, uh, the processes and the outcome and then the way forward. I said I must be gentle. I am really gentle, Ken. Okay. Dr. Okole was born before technology. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you for the compliment. Uh, but let's start with Botany 101, so that I was I'm not right. Okay, so many people are confused between cannabis and hemp, so I just thought it would be better for me to give a background of what cannabis is all about and what hemp is all about. Um, 
Both of them belong to the family. This is Botany 101, cannabis here, but you're going to learn a lot from it. And the genus is called cannabis, and they have three species. You have cannabis sativa, cannabis, uh, cannabis sativa, cannabis indica, uh, cannabis ruderalis. And the easiest way to understand the cannabis is to look at the leaves. I normally look at the leaves. The sativa has nine uh, lobes, and then the indica seven, and then the uh, ruderalis has five lobes. I don't know why. It's a difference of two, if you check on them, on the lobes. And then uh, both uh, cannabis sativa and uh, uh, hemp and cannabis, which I will call here marijuana cannabis, and then hemp, just to differentiate, is uh, uh, they are belong to the same uh, uh, plant uh, species. So it's Cannabis sativa is the same. If you say cannabis sativa, is hemp falls under cannabis sativa, and marijuana also falls under cannabis sativa. But the main difference between both, which people don't know, or some know, I, I'm expecting everybody in this room to at least know, but one is really taller than the other one. Uh, the hemp is taller, the marijuana is a little bit shorter, and then one produces a high CBD, which is the hemp, and then the marijuana is the THC. So that's the major difference. Let me go into the, into the uses. Maybe it will be... I think I need Kenny to be pushing my slides. <laughs> so these are the uses of cannabis. So is the entire, I'm just, the entire plant can be used, but uh, people feel you can use uh, hemp and cannabis for fiber, but it doesn't work like that. So the major areas in hemp are mainly the leaves, the, uh, the, the, the leaves which, sorry, the flowers, which people use for, for uh, recreational, and also the flowers which you use to get your oils, where you can get your distillates or your isolates. And yeah, cannabis, which are marijuana, it's mainly uh, has a very high TAC compared to your uh, uh, hemp. Ah, I'm winning. So the South African cannabis industry. This is a very lucrative industry, but we need to get the best out of it. It is a $206 million from prohibition partners uh, business, and it's projected to grow at 31.1% to 2.4 billion. When everybody sees that, I think your eyes will pop. But if you look at it also, there are certain issues in it. Which areas in the plant are really important? The flowers, the concentrates, and others. And in the product type, which we try, we they try to split into the different products, you have the TAC, which they use for the recreational purposes. It's also used for medicinal. You have the CBD and then both. You could see the percentages and the millions that are coming into it. For the uses of the applications, it's mainly used for pain management, neurological health, mental health, and others. Uh, it has challenges, and if you look at it, there are almost 900,000 smallholder farmers growing cannabis in the country. This is a big number. They, most of it, they said they are growing it illegally, but that is what is making the growth of this industry. And from what our president said in his speech in, in January this year, he said we could create almost 130 jobs from it. How do we do that? Another thing, again, which I want to point out is that South African market has the biggest market in Africa. So if we can work on this and make it happen, there's really a lot of economic potential that we could get from cannabis. Uh, there is, why is the market growing? There is increasing knowledge of medicinal cannabis, which is very good. Uh, there is higher demand for cannabis for treatment of various diseases. Remember, our sangomas and traditional uh, healers have been using this plant for long. So it's been used for medicinal, for, for, for treating people in different, uh, dif different diseases. And then there's growing research and in, uh, development in the, in, in, the, in the cannabis industry. There's a lot of investment also. There are many uh, investment companies that are looking in the cannabis sector, including some of our government agencies. Uh, but what uh, one of our uh, Rastafarian, Greg Zweni, said is that the government needs to do more to support small-scale farmers to enable them compete in the international market. This is a very uh, a strong statement. 
And that is a challenge also for the CSR, which we see we, sh we can do a lot in that area. What are the major challenges to really build this industry? It's, I think it's mainly regulatory, the permits, because you saw in my earlier slides, 900,000 people growing cannabis. How do we have them in this inclusive, in this lucrative gold? Uh, uh, Kenny started with the uh, uh, green, green gold. How do we bring them into this market? How research and development is still is starting up. We all know when the regulations were lifted. So we need to do a lot of regulations in this area. And the key things you need to look into it is mainly the quality, the efficacy, and the pricing of the products, and also the branding and financing. So right now, we have a lot in the market, as you can see. Uh, but what we're trying to do now at CSR is to see how some of these products can be South African brands. These are mostly what you see here are uh, imported brands. It's flooded the markets. That is not so good for us. Money is going to other people's pockets. We need to start making this money in our own pockets. So uh, we've started a program at the CSR. We decided to take the bull by the horn. Of course, with very strong partners behind us, which I will highlight at the end, uh, to assist SMMEs to produce quality, efficacious products that will meet international standards in, and sell in both the local and the international markets. And what we've done is that we have over 20 SMMEs that we're going to incubate at the CSR, and they will work in different areas, in the areas of cosmetics, areas of food, nutraceuticals, and African traditional medicines. And these SMMEs will not only be trained on how to produce their products, they will be given business skills. So we're, working, we're going to work with other partners also in the innovation space, like the Innovation Hub, Coach Lab, to train them on business skills and how they can market these products. Because you could have fantastic products, but if you don't know how to sell them, also it's a product, it's a problem. These are the uh, institutions that are supporting us, the Department of Science and Innovation, Department of Small Business Development, and the Houghton Department of Agriculture and Rural Development. What are the, uh, how did we go to select these SMMEs? There was a call of expression, which was in June uh, 2022. We had almost 150 SMMEs that applied. Of course, we had to go through a shortlisting process and then went to uh, presenting them to a committee, had an interview with them, whether they are really the face, we put the face to the people who are doing the job. And also then we had one-on-one -on -one with them to discuss on the work plan because they have fantastic ideas. They want 20 products. So we said, no, it doesn't work like that. You have to look at what are the products that will sell and what are the products that can make impact for you, you know? So we had to do some marketing work, marketing research work with them to make sure that we limit their products to maybe at least three. I mean, we're talking about 20 SMMEs and there may be more because there are other organizations that are interested in it. And then we'll be starting laboratory work this week, uh, this, this month in October. What will be the outcome of this? We're planning on having safe, quality, and efficacious products with these SMMEs. We want also to upscale their products that they have to create jobs, link them with private and public sector, introduction to local and international markets. So what is good here also is that you have SMMEs, it's like a pipeline for most of the investing institutions. You have SMMEs that have been incubated, they have products that meet international, all the standards, marketing, I think it's now it's easier for them to put in funds into it. And we've already started that with big, I don't want to call names, but both private and public. They are very interested in the, in the model. And then to assist them also, because some of them don't have permits, they don't have license to facilitate them in having most of the licenses and, and permits, and then also to have uh, the access to international global networks. So these are some of the, what equipments we have at the CSR. Uh, we have, we do both solvent and uh, CO2 extraction. This is our solvent extraction machine. Uh, it is a 100 liter extraction vessel, and it does most of these. So this is what we call the full cannabis extract oil. And when we, we've done our research, I didn't touch it, Kenny. So, so we, <laughs> we've done our research at the CSR, 
and, and now we can actually produce the, the oil from re, to remove the chlorophyll and the waxes to produce the oil. Uh, we also did a lot of analysis. We have CS, of course, this is CSR. We have a lot of analytical skills, GCMS, HPLC, all of that. We have that at the CSR. We've been able to identify most of the uh, cannabinoids and the important ones that are useful for medicinal purposes. Uh, we also acquired a new uh, supercritical CO2 with the Swane University of Technology. This is just to compare what was the best, either CO2 or, or, sol or solvent extraction. Of course, each of them have their own advantages and disadvantages. And this is what comes out, this is, I call it the sheet. It looks like baby sheet, baby poo. <laughs> this is the poo that comes out from, from the CO2 extraction. It's really, the good thing about it is that you don't have chlorophyll in it, okay? But you still have waxes in it also. It still requires a little bit of downstream processing, but it's easier than the alcohol extraction. And uh, just to pose a little bit about some of the great facilities we have at the uh, CSR. Kenny, I'm finished. Thank you very much, colleagues.